Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back to our channel, The Eaton Squad. My name is Eddie. So for today's video, you should remember this. Seven things when you register with eTravel. These are significant when you register with eTravel. What are they? Details coming up. When you register with eTravel, especially the latest update that they did on the enhanced eTravel system, which they actually did it easy, they did it short to register and user-friendly. We came up with seven important things that you should remember when you register with eTravel. I'll show it to you guys that way you won't have a hard time when you're trying to register with eTravel because there seems to be confusion when some of our Kababayans trying to register with eTravel and they get confused in one step to another if they really need to fill this out or on what information they should input on a particular step for eTravel. So let's start with the first one. The very first one is the new travel declaration. You guys can see this, especially if you guys have an e-travel account. So this is the first thing that would pop up on your screen. On your e-travel account is your name, your passport number, then the new e-travel declaration. So that's the box that you should click. I've been asked several times if how many times we should do e-travel? Is it every time we travel to the Philippines? The answer is yes. The account creation, you can do this one time. But e-travel registration, you have to do this every time you go home to the Philippines. This is just like the paper-based before, that every time you arrive in the Philippines, you have to fill out this form. Same thing with e-travel. So new travel declaration. Do this every time you travel to the Philippines. Click on that box, then it should start asking you information that you should input in every step so you guys can generate the QR code. The second important thing to remember on e-travel is that selfie is still required. I know we did an update on this that they have removed selfie completely but they actually put it back. So when you do your new travel declaration, you have to do a selfie. Third is the date of return. So we have quite a few of our Kababayans, not just our Kababayans, but also with our foreign national friends, that they get confused on what date they should put in this box on this step, especially if they have only booked a one-way ticket. So what you should do, since you don't really have a ticket of your return date, you can input an intent date because they don't really require or they don't want to see your return date. So they can really confirm that this is your return date. No, they don't do that. So to those who have booked a one-way ticket, just input an intent date. That way you guys can proceed on your e-travel registration. The fourth one is the newest feature on e-travel. This is the transit information. This applies specifically to those travelers with connecting flights before you proceed to the Philippines. So for example, you're coming from the U.S., you have a layover in Japan, then from Japan to the Philippines. Your layover in Japan, that's the information that you will put on this step with transit, connecting flights. So it would ask for the country of transit, the airport of transit, and the date of transit. You should be able to see that in your itinerary. So just input the information that they need on this step, then you're off to the next step. But if you have a connecting flight, this is not necessary. You don't even have to do this step. The fifth one is the customs declaration step. So as we all know, Customs declaration is now incorporated to the e-travel system. So the very first step on this is read up the general information that's posted on this page. 
Then it would ask if they have baggage to declare or currency to declare. For baggage declaration, if most of the items that you bring to the Philippines are for personal use, then you don't need to declare anything. Or if the money you are bringing in into the Philippines is less than 10000 you don't need to declare that as well. So on this part, like I said, if most of the items that you bring are more for personal use, you check no. But if you are bringing in commercial quantities, then you should check yes. Then it would give you an itemized categories on what you are bringing in on commercial quantities. Still on the customs declaration, just because you answered no if you have a baggage to declare or a currency to declare on this step, other travel details, you still have to input how many baggage are you bringing. If you have company, how many of you are traveling? Is this your first time in the Philippines and stuff? How many check-in bags? How many carry-on bags? So there was a confusion on this step because, yes, you check no, that you have nothing to declare. But why are they asking these details? If how many bags do I have? How many check-in? How many carry-on? That's completely fine because, like I said earlier, if those items that's on your check-in bag and carry-on bag are more for personal use then you don't really need to declare anything and if you are bringing ten thousand us dollars then you don't need to declare that as well so i hope that we have addressed that confusion already so don't freak out because some would say oh my god i just said no but they are asking how many bags i have with me how many check-in bags how many carry-on bags so just don't worry about it then the very last one also one of the features of e-travel that you can add your family this is also incorporated on the latest enhanced e-travel portal like i said you can add your husband your wife your mom your dad your sisters your brothers your son and your daughter so any of those that are not on the drop down menu and traveling with you unfortunately they have to do their own separate E travel so i hope that we have now addressed this confusion in some of our couple clients who are trying to register with e travel these are some of the things that some of our couple buying gets confused for one of the top frequently asked questions in the channel and hopefully with this guide and with this clarification you guys are able to register with e travel smoothly quickly and no hassle and just in case you still have other things that you don't really understand with e-travel please comment it down below and we may do a part two of this video that way we can really understand how to do e-travel when you are traveling to the philippines so this is our latest travel updates to the philippines thank you guys so much for watching if you have any questions concerns or inquiries with regards to this video or in any of our travel related videos please comment down below and i will try to get back to you guys as soon as i can please bear with me in answering your comments there's quite a lot of comments in every videos that we upload we will try to answer each and every comments that we will receive i apologize if i don't answer those comments that really doesn't make sense i give way to those comments that needed more attention and needed more answers on the inquiries that they posted in the comment section again guys thank you thank you so much for the continued support and trust to our channel and to our family i hope to see you in our next travel update stay safe stay healthy and god bless everyone